All right, guys, so I am excited to tell you about my new property here. This is gonna be an investment property. It's three acres. My property line starts right there and goes over that way. I have 150 foot of road frontage here. The biggest obstacle to this property is gonna be this hill right here. So pretty much the whole road frontage has a slope to it, except for right here. That's where I'm gonna put the driveway. It's not too bad right there. It gets worse as you go up. So my goal is to put a concrete house here with a low slope roof on it, and it's gonna have a garden on the roof. So it's gonna be for sale eventually, and I'm starting to get the plans together now, but for right now, we are in the middle of the road, and it takes up a lot of this road because it's a small road, so I need to cut in a driveway right here, just a rough driveway, just to be able to get off the road for now. So I don't want to get too much into details. I just want to get going. And once we get something cleared where I can pull in off the road, then we can relax a little bit more. But for right now, I need to get to that point so that we're not in the middle of the road. So I just had the mini excavator here today. This is the perfect machine for cutting in a trail like this. That's, that's all it's gonna be is just a trail for right now. So I gotta go right through here. A machine like this is perfect for the first day of a job like this because you can come in, you can use a blade to get the ground scraped up. You can use a thumb to get the brush and trees moved out. And just in general, you can, you can do a lot of damage with this for the first day. Once you clear out a spot where you can pull in a truck and trailer, then you can bring bigger equipment. But this is the perfect way to start out. Pickup truck and mini excavator. So I'm gonna rush through this first part because it's just a bunch of grunt work. Just I just need to get all this brush out of the way. I could have brought the skid steer with a grapple, but then I wouldn't be able to dig anything or take down any big trees. So that's why I decided to use this machine. So let's get started.
one I've ever seen. I have some firewood out of here. Yeah, that tree is dead. That tree is ready to burn. That's an ash tree too. Yeah, not too many ash trees left around here. Yep, but there's lots of cherry. That's a cherry right there. That's a that's a cherry right there. Yeah. The one that's all cool? Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely save that tree. That is awesome. Locust, locust. A lot locust. of locust. Locust, 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 locust. Cherry, look at this. <clears throat> that's a big old cherry. Milk. That's a milk tree right there, boy. It's a big old cherry tree. I wonder why they always call it cherry tree. There ain't never no cherries on it. Never seen a cherry before. Look at that. There's a big old cherry tree right there. And, and that one. That one too. Look, this one. There's one right there. Man, there's a lot How of far there. back do you go, them? Uh, Back where them pine trees are? Oh no, I see the snow, I see the stone wall there. This one? Yeah. No, this is the beginning. Huh? This is the beginning. All right, so, so, so what you see right now, all this, this corner right here, here's a stake right there, right? So that okay. means that means that my property juts all the way down to the opening over there. See that? See the oh, okay. opening down there? That's like a swamp. It goes like three, four hundred feet that way, way over that hill, and then it goes down like three hundred feet, over like six hundred feet. And it, so you see the neighbors over there? I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm up to almost there, into the road. So so this whole square right here that you see from the road there to the neighbor there and everything to the road over there in that corner is mine and that's the small part of the property once you get past this it opens up a lot it opens up way that way that line over there continues down into the, there's a swamp right there it kind of hugs the swamp and it goes straight back but then this one goes just way out here you might as well just take a minute and just walk around because not much time left anyway.
All right, so we're back here the next day. All the work that I did yesterday was only about two hours. I came here late in the day, and everything that we've done is within a two hour period. So I have a lot more time today to do stuff. So my goal is to make this entrance drivable with like a two wheel drive car. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come and cut this hill right here to make it a wider swing coming in. And I'm gonna use that because it's mostly rocks. There's a low spot over here that I really need to fill in. Right here. It doesn't really show up on camera, but that's like three feet low right there. So I need to add whatever kind of fill, the most stable fill I can find, which is mostly rocks. So we're gonna peel back the brush and stuff on the top, bring that back there, and then start cutting this and bringing it over there with the skid steer. And once we get that reasonable, I'm gonna come over here and just fluff this up and make it look nice with the skid steer. And then I'm gonna put some geo. I just have, I don't even know how much I have. Whatever it is, I'm just gonna use it up. And I'm gonna start the geo back maybe like eight to 10 feet because we do need to put a culvert pipe here. But if you guys have seen my videos where I put in a driveway, I always put the culvert pipe in after things are established. So later on this year, I'll put a culvert pipe in here and I don't wanna put geo where that's gonna be because that's just gonna be a waste and I'm gonna have to rip it up. So I'll start back here, roll it out as far as I can. And then I got one load of crusher run. It's like 10 tons and I'll see how far that gets me. And I'm also gonna put it here too. I'm just gonna scrape this sod back and and I'm gonna try to see how far back I can go with this stone. So the goal is by the end of the day to be able to drive a two wheel drive car in at least to the end of the gravel there. And maybe we'll have time to get another load of gravel. I'm not sure, we'll see. I already found a spot for my truck and trailer back here. So it's out of the way, which is really nice. Cause it takes up a lot of space. But yeah, everything we did here was within a two hour period. So we got this whole parking area over here. And then this is where the driveway is gonna go right here. So this is already starting to look like something now. 
there is still a slight pitch on the road going that way but I'm not too worried about it it's pretty close right now so I'll make up that difference with stone with the crusher on this geofabric is only 12 feet wide so it's only gonna go right in the middle here there will be like six or eight feet on each side which don't see geo right now I'm not worried about that right now though I'm just trying to get a road going straight back and then I'll flute it out to the sides later on maybe after I do the culvert pipe here Trying to make this little turnaround spot where you can kind of pull in with a trailer back up this way and then go out again because it's hard with a trailer i wanted it so you could circle all the way around but that wasn't going to happen going around that way this is the very front of the property so i'm sure later on we can find a better turnaround spot but for right now all we need to do is clear this brush out of the way all this stuff here and then we already got most of that over there. So that's quick, easy work without having to take down any trees. Because that's one thing I don't really want to do in here is take down a whole bunch of trees, only what's necessary. So far to put in this road, I haven't had to take down anything really. Like maybe stuff that's four inches or smaller is all I've had to take out. I don't want to take out any big trees. There's a lot of really cool locust trees in here. Definitely don't want to take those out.
You want a bunny? No. Aged two years old and four months. Died April first or no, April sixteenth, eighteen thirty-five. Eighteen thirty-five. Hester and daughter of I and M. Gregory. Edel Aid, daughter of what is that? Something and Mary Gregory died on the fourth month of can't see that eighteen thirty six. Age, that's age 10. What this is, oh, I can't see it. Okay, so we got at least two graves here. Looks like we got maybe some more here. I don't know, maybe these are dogs or horses or something. I'm not really sure what these other ones are here. Let me know what you guys think. Was it common to have something like this for pets or animals? Because so there's no writing on them. So I'd imagine if it was a human, there'd be writing on it. And there's like this little one right here. No writing on it. 1833, that's crazy. It's almost 200 years old. Yeah, I'm thinking the building site's gonna be about another 100 feet that way. I don't want it near the road and I don't want it near the back of the property line or the sides, kinda of right in the middle. Yeah, and I think this is about the corner of the property right here. There's a lot of stone walls in here. See, so this stone wall, yeah, I own this. And then over the bank here. Oh my me, I'm just thinking out loud here. Yeah, this is about... This isn't the corner, but this is the line going that way. But you can see they stacked a lot of stones back in the days. Who knows, maybe this is all field at one time. Maybe these are field stones. Stones taken out of fields to make them better for growing crops. It's hard to tell because 200 years ago, this could have easily been all fields. Even with giant trees like this. Um, yeah. Look. All right, so right out by the front here, right next to the road, there's an old foundation. Definitely matches the date of 1800s. I 
you can't really see it on camera. This old foundation here. This is a basement. What? And there's the walkout part of the basement. <laughs> it's kind of caved in, but. <laughs> hey. What do you guys think? Why don't you show them what my shirt says? What does it say? It's, I don't know. It's tough being right all the time, but I manage. Yeah, that seems about right for you, Katie. Snake? Snake? No, no there's, there's no snakes. Shirt. Don't worry. I was gonna tie dye it, but I was like, mm, no, I right? pretty sure. Alright, so this is looking pretty good here. We got lots done. So in total, we have about three quarters of a day today and a quarter of a day yesterday. So a day between two guys, two machines. And this is what we got. And this whole area over here is cleared off. It's pretty clean. So this is a nice little area here. It's a nice big area that we didn't have to take out any big trees or anything so now we can turn around vehicles even trailers here so I'll explain the story behind this whole property I helped one of my customers buy this property um, like six years ago or so and he was gonna do it as an investment and then sell it maybe and I was gonna do a bunch of work on one property and then across the street there's another property so he bought two of them at once so so across the street, that's a triangle section right there. And so he bought both of them. So I was going to do work on that one for him in exchange for this one here. But fast forward like six years, wanted to buy it from him instead of doing work for it. That way, it's just a done deal. I paid 15 grand for this property. And later on, I'll show you what the actual boundaries look like. But this is like a 150 foot section from here over to there, over to there. That's the front. That's the small section. And then there's a stone wall over here. There's a corner. And then it juts out that way. I can't remember how much, like 250, 300 feet that way. And then a long ways back. So after this area, it widens out a lot. So this is like the entrance area. Three acres is more than most people think. You can do a lot with this. Across the street, that one is like 2.3 acres. And so what ended up happening is, I bought this one and my parents bought the one across the street. So we're both doing it as an investment property. We're both gonna put a spec house on there and then eventually sell it. Probably not gonna get tied up in rentals or anything like that. I've never been a fan of that. There's this nice little stone wall here covered up by a bunch of brush, but I'll get that cleaned up. This would be a nice little entrance area right here. This came out better than I thought, honestly. This is, um, my goal in this area was to be able to bring my low boy in here. And I probably wouldn't try it from that way, just because I'd get hung up right there. But I think I could easily bring it in from there, swing wide out this way. And that's why I made this swoop around here to be able to bring the cab of the truck around here. That way the trailer just comes around that corner and I think I should be able to do it. it it's gonna be tight, but I always knew it was gonna be tight and it's less tight in my opinion than it was when I thought about it before. Now that it's actually done, I can see that this is not too bad. Worst case scenario, I do have that flat spot. I could always unload from the low boy there. But to be honest, I'm not even sure if I really need my low boy in here for a while anyways. Because the only machine I really need to transport with that is going to be... Well, there's two, I guess. The crane and my big excavator. But the plan for the next few months is... When I close on my old house, selling it, I'm going to buy a mid-size excavator. Like 80, 
horsepower or so, like a 75 or 80 type machine. And then I can pull it with that. So I, I don't know if I really need the low boy in here, not anytime soon anyways. But my goal was to plan for the low boy. And I figured if I can get the low boy in here, I can get absolutely anything in here. I can also widen that out more. I can bring, I can bring the crusher run from there all the way over to there. So then I really have some space to turn here. But I don't think it's necessary. So both me and my parents both paid 15 grand for each property. My customer that I got it from, he, he bought them for, I think, 15 grand for both of them together, which is like crazy cheap. I helped them get the property, and the reason why we got it for that cheap was because we bought both of them at once. What's nice about this is when we go to get wells, you can get a discount when you're doing two at once. And I ordered a survey, and that we can also get a discount for doing two of them at once. So those sort of things help out too. My parents are probably going to be a while behind me. I really shouldn't even be doing this right now, but I wanted to get this road pushed in at least this far for this year, just so that I could come here during the winter. Just to be able to get off the road was my goal. So I've accomplished that. And if I can't see another day here until next year, I'm fine with that. But I'm gonna to try to get back here if things are going good for my house. Right now, I don't wanna to spend too much more time here because I need to get my house done before freezing weather. I need to put the roof on. Once that roof is on, if I have some free time, I'll definitely come back here. Because this is like fun. I don't even consider this work. This is, this is just fun the whole time. I love this kind of stuff. And what's nice is it's my property. I don't have to worry about anybody telling me what to do, obviously, except for the town. But it's not a customer's property where, you know, you have to kind of abide by whatever they want to do. The whole purpose of doing this was to be able to set myself up so I don't have to work for customers anymore. I don't really mind working for customers, but it's so much better if you can work for yourself. If I can get a few of these properties going and at various stages, you know, and then I can sell one when it's done and keep take the money and put it into the other one. And if I have like two or three of those going on and keep juggling it around, then eventually stuff like this will get you an, an entire retirement. And that's, that's always nice to look forward to especially for people in this kind of work. It's not easy to come by retirement options. And I'm nowhere near retiring. I'm, I'm just trying to plan for the future. So I really don't know where I'm gonna put the house yet. I know it's gonna be a ways back, at least another 100 feet or so from here. And uh, I don't wanna clear a huge space, but it'll be big enough to do what we need to do. And I'm not, I'm not gonna build a huge house either. I'm gonna build something probably a little bit smaller. Probably just one story with a full basement and it's going to have a concrete roof very low sloped like a half on 12 pitch roof and then we'll be able to it'll be called a green roof so you can put a garden or put grass on the top or whatever you want to do and it'll be it'll be really neat it'll definitely be really neat something you don't see very much but it'll also be simple it'll be much more simple than my house Maybe the same footprint, but much more simple. And I'm not doing two stories either. So that's the story for this property. Depending on how much you guys like these videos, I might try to squeeze another one in. And if I get time, I'll squeeze another two or three of them in by the end of the year. I'd like to keep moving forward with this, but there really is no rush. I'm not going to be selling it anytime soon. I'm not looking for the money back anytime soon. I know that's going to take years, but in the meantime, every time I come over here, it's like I'm having fun. This is my cubicle here. This is my office space. It's kind of neat. I've never done this before as a spec house, so I'm looking forward to it. So, so that's it for now, and I'll see you guys on the next set of videos.